Hello everyone, welcome to the first lab of EC573 Advanced Embedded Logic Design. In the previous lab, uh, in the previous videos, we discussed about the development of the block diagram and uh, simple hello world example in the processing system of the Zink SOC. Now we will discuss about the slightly more complex example on implementing the fast Fourier transform on the processor of the Zinc SOC. So we'll follow the same process from the block diagram. We will do the uh, first, you, if you have modified any anything in the block diagram, make sure you do the export hardware, otherwise go to the launch. So now the SDK will open. Okay, so in case you get the windows something like this, which is like a same as the previous video, you can go to the normal mode by clicking here, okay? So now here, you will come back to your normal, you will be out of your debug mode. Then I'll create a new project, new application project, where I'll again have the lab demo, but this is the part two, okay? In this part two, we are going to do the 50. The rest of the process is same. Here I will again start with the hello world and we'll modify that code. So you can see that the another new project is created and corresponding BSP files. You can use the same BSP for your project also. So that is also possible. So now go to this uh, code. So we'll close the previous uh, files. So go to the source here and then click on the hello world. So this is the basic code. Again, in the F50, uh, please refer to the handout where we are going to do the, uh, where the entire code is explained. So we are going to implement the eight point F50. So, uh, the, uh, so we, I'll just copy the code here so that we can discuss it in a brief manner. So again, uh, you have the F50 uh, code where you have the main function. Then what he, here we are doing is that we are defining the input to the F50. The F50 size is a parameter which we have defined as a eight. Okay, so it is a eight point F50. Then we are defined giving the eight complex values to the F50. So you can see that the data type is uh, complex and the float. So that's why we have used the complex dot H in our uh, code. Okay, so once you do that, in the, this is my F50, in the F50 output, I'll store the F50, uh, output of the F50. And, uh, and then you can see that there is a, another uh, variable which is used to store the uh, uh, F50 input uh, modif uh, updated in the proper order. As you know that in the F50, either you need to reorder your input or you will get the, to get the output in the desired normal order or you need to you you need to reorder your output if your input is provided in the proper order normal order so here we are going to reordering the input so that we get the output in the proper normal order so first thing what we are doing is that we are printing the output of the fft so that is what we are are doing here then uh, uh, we are doing the input reorder function we are writing the separate function here after we do the input reorder, we are going to do the proper FFT operation. So it's a 8.50. So there will be a three stages of the butterfly. And then we are printing the output of the FFT. So this is our main function. And we will, in the main function, we are calling the two function for the input reordering. And the second is for the, for the FFT operation. In case you want to uh, verify the functionality in the MATLAB, they have also given the corresponding code here. Now, come uh, input reorder. Again, uh, as we have discussed in the uh, previous video, the butter in the butterfly architecture, you can see that the uh, you need to uh, order the inputs in such that the, you get the first sample of the input, then the fourth sample, uh, uh, fifth sample, 
then the third sample and so on. So what we are doing, we are reordering the input data in the data out in this particular order. Okay, so this is very simple function. Then we have the 50 stages. Again, as we have shown in the previous video about the butterfly diagram, you can see that you will have the uh, stage one here, stage two, and then stage three. Again, in each stage, we will have the multiple butterfly stages. So for example, in the stage one, you will see that we will have the uh, uh, corresponding, uh, you can see that we will have the corresponding number of four butterfly stages. So that's why I plus two, then we'll have the two butterfly stages, and then you will have the one butterfly stage here. Okay, so once this is done, then the inside the butterfly stage, the operations are very simple. You either do the addition and then the multiplication with the Twiddle factor. And then you do the addition in the upper uh, arm and the subtraction in the lower arm. Okay, so you can refer to the our block diagram of the F50. It is one to one matching between the block diagram and this code. Now, if you are comfortable with this code, then the process of uh, implementing on the board remote hardware is the same. So uh, I will not discuss on the local hardware because it is just you need to right click and uh, do the run as and you need to use the Terratum. So for the remote hardware, again, click on the, the first thing we need to do is that we need to go to the BSP, okay? Uh, modify the BSP settings so that your UART outputs are mapped to your, uh, your Terra JTAC terminal, okay? So this process is very important. You need to uh, make sure that you, you do this process. So your BSP will be recreated and after this, you need to uh, right click on the, your project, then do the debug uh, configuration and uh, make sure that the configuration parameters are correct and then click on debug. So go to the debug, uh, go to the debug configuration. In the debug configuration, you can see you are using the remote board. The system is resetted in the beginning. So this looks fine. Uh, this looks fine. So then click on debug. Yes. Okay, so this looks good. So I'll open the JTAG terminal. Okay, so this is sorted out. And then uh, you can see that you can see the different registers of your processor here, uh, different variables value, you can store it here, you can see it here. So for example, uh, Okay, so by mistake, I ran the our first project. So we need to close this one. We need to uh, disconnect this one and go to the our project window. And I think while uh, doing selecting the debug configuration, um, I selected the old project. Oh yeah, so I selected the old project here. So click on the system debugger. Uh, double click on this one, then remote one. Okay, this is fine. Reset hardware, this is fine. Application is lab to demo. Okay, so make sure you don't make this mistake. So then click on the debug window. So let's hope that our new, yeah. So you can see that the now new project is uh, executed. So I'll click on the console and open the JTAG terminal. Okay, so now the JTAG terminal is open for the remote hardware. If you have the physical hardware, you don't need this one. You can use the Terratum. Now, uh, another thing we need to see is that uh, this variable. So you can see that you can check out these variable values in this variable window. You can check out where the breakpoints you want to put here. 
then you can uh, check out the in the ARM processor, you have the various registers. So those registers you can check out here. Uh, then uh, in this memory, in the future, future lab, we will need to know what is the content of the memory. So you can monitor the content of the memory here. So you can do this uh, debugging in the step-by-step -step fashion. So for example, now we can um, see what happens after we execute this slide. So I'll just click and run to line. So you can see that the content of the 50 inputs are updated. So you can check the status, whether your code is working fine or not here, okay? Okay, also if you want to show the corresponding assembly language code, you can also see that because your C code is converted into the set of assembly language and that assembly language uh, instructions are executed by the processor. So you can go to the here and click on this assembly and you can see that the, your each set of the instructions are correct, uh, converted to assembly language and you can track all these things. Okay, so this is also uh, very important feature. So now coming back to our uh, code, so we'll just uh, run the code till this point. I'll click on run to this line and we'll go to the JTAG and you can see that this is our input which is being printed. So we have the input which is the, the complex input. So we are printing the corresponding uh, complex uh, values, imaginary as well as the real values. Then you can see that we are going to the input reorder. So we can go step by step and then input reorder stage. So we can run the code to this point. So now here you can see that you have the data in and the data out. And uh, after we come back here, we will see that the data reordering has been done. So you can see that now the FFT REV. So this one is the reorder version of the uh, previous one. So you can see that the uh, zeroth value is same, but if you see the uh, first value, it will be the fourth value. That is the 47 uh, value. So you can see that the data 47 and 96. So this is the reordering is done. And after that, you do the FFT output. You can do the line by line uh, uh, debugging there. So I'll just run it here. So my FFT operation is done. So I have the output in the FFT output and then I'll display that output here. Okay. So I'll display this output on the JTAG terminal and I get the output. You can verify using the MATLAB code whether the output is correct or not. So you can do the modification to the code. For example, you can implement the 64-point FFT on larger size FFT. Also, you can uh, take the input size, FFT size from user and then keep the, your code dynamic for any FFT size. So these are the modifications you can do. Obviously, the FFT size will be the power of two. So this completes our uh, first lab where we discuss about the uh, configuration of the PS in the Vivado and then two examples. One is the simple hello world example and the another is the how to do the FFT on the ARM um, processor.